In today's show, we're talking Portland Trailblazers for the fantasy basketball season, sleepers, busts, and, of course, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball going to bring all of your guys' hopes and well wishes and positive energy towards my team in the AFL today. The Western Bulldogs, we are playing in the last game before our equivalent of the Super Bowl, before the grand final. We play tonight. So when I'm coming back for tomorrow's shows, which they're going to be shows tomorrow, you might see me absolutely elated or a completely broken man. So Bulldogs. Doggies, doggies, doggies. Bark, bark, bark. We, f- we cross our fingers. We hope that tomorrow when I'm back recording that I am absolutely tipping this desk over and it's a big desk without using my hands. All right, guys, let's talk about this Portland Trailblazers team. We spoke with Mike earlier on from a lo- for a local perspective on the Blazers. Let's have a look at the fantasy value that this team can bring us. And we start by looking at the schedule breakdown. And let's be honest, there's some pretty shit things in here. They have 46 quality games. That is the second lowest amount of anybody in the NBA. So not that the Blazers have tons of these guys because yeah, the majority of their play- players, your Lillards, McCullums, Covingtons, Nance, oh, Nance maybe not, Nurkic, Powell, they're going to be must roster guys anyway. It's not ideal to have only 46 games, but streaming guys off the wire, it's going to be less likely to do it. Yeah, again, you're probably looking at maybe like it's a Cody Zeller scenario or it's an Anthony Simons in a case of an injury. So it's not going to actually impact that much, but it's not ideal if those situations arise. They have 14 back-to-backs, which is above average. Now, their playoff schedule is pretty um, pretty interesting because in a default Yahoo, which ends April the 3rd, perfect. The best schedule you can find, 12 games, 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Awesome. If you use the schedule that I suggest, it's only nine. It's terrible. Two, three, and four. Two games in the first round of the playoffs. Pairing that with the 46 quality games, it makes the Blazers slightly less appealing. Again, I don't really care about three games versus four games, but two games versus four games. So when you're drafting CJ or Dame, and this is the playoffs you're going for, it is really, really, uh, it is a factor. And and I think it does have to be mentioned. Those two game weeks, uh, they're super important, or they can be super important, and they can actually have an impact. It's, it's two versus four is huge. Three versus four is not quite as big, but for two versus four is because uh, I know maths. Um, yeah, three versus two versus four is is a, is a really big deal. Let's look at pressure points um, for this upcoming season. Is it going to be Norman Powell or is it going to be Larry Nance that starts? Um, I again, I, I do think it'll be Powell, much like Mike does. But that could change. It could be Nance staying. And then Nance, look, Nance plays 30 minutes a night. He's a top 100 guy. I don't think there's any doubt about that. If Powell plays instead of 30 minutes a night, 25 minutes a night, which I don't think he will, then he becomes more of a last round pick streamer sort of player. So that to me is a really, it's a big one. It is a big decision or it is a big thought process that we need to have when looking at this Blazers team. And if we get indications from Billups and we see in the preseason, this is what they're going with. We have to adjust our expectations. So there is a problem. There could be a problem there on that pressure point as to who starts or who gets the bulk of those minutes. We also don't know what the new coach is going to do. It's Chauncey Billups. He made that comment about shooting fewer threes, so then sort of backtracked it. But yeah, what will that change things? Will they yeah, be really leaning into heavier usage Damian Lillard? Will we see more from Nurkic? They've talked that up a lot as well. We don't know how it's going to work with his scheme. Will their defense be more aggressive defensively? Which I know I said defense twice in that sentence. But in the past, Stotts have been a very, like, let's play back and not go for steals. They might go super aggressive Jason Kidd style in that first year in Milwaukee and everyone's steal numbers go through the roof and Dane becomes a top three player. That's possible. And then uh, tying into that point as well, uh, Yusuf Nurkic. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Everyone knows 
that I was big on Nurkic last season. End of the second round, start of the third round. I thought big stuff was coming. And he was bad. He was really bad. And kids, cover your ears. I fucked it up. Like, that happens. I really believe in Nurkic as a player still. And we'll talk about him a little bit later on. But we don't know what Billups is going to do. Could Chauncey look at him as a 31-minute-a-night guy, second-best player on the team, as he absolutely should? And then Nurkic literally can be a top-30 player again. Or does he look at him as, like, we're going to split the minutes with him and Zala, play more Covington and Nance at center, and Nurkic just sort of is a guy that sits in the dunker spot, and that's it. I, I don't know what Nurkic's role is going to be. Thankfully, we've got a buffer based on where his rankings lie at the moment, where you can get him at, at a pretty good price. But we don't know. We don't know exactly where Nurk is going to be sitting in terms of the Blazers' uh, hierarchy for this season. Football is back. Pro football started. College football going on as well. And the best place to place your bets on all your football action is at Bet Online. Bet Online gives you all the updated odds, props, and contests, including online's biggest NFL mega contest, million dollar mega contest, and the world's largest $200,000 NFL survivor contest, which is open now at Bet Online. Head to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to sign up today using our promo code locked on. For a 100% welcome bonus, Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports from football, basketball, boxing, or even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait, get in and take advantage of all the great offers they have for the 2021 season. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. You watch your live TV, you watch your favorite streaming shows, you watch your on demand programs, you've got your highlights on your phone, everything is all over the place. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It is called Direct TV Stream and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there is no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. Breakout candidates. I think it's pretty rough here. Anthony Simons, maybe. Like Mike, I don't really believe in Simons as a future star or anything like that. But I also believe in him more than I believe in Nasir Little or Greg Brown or Trendon Watford or Cody Zeller or whatever other bullshit they bring in. The only guy who I think has got breakout upside is Simons. He's got a pretty shitty fantasy game with low rebounds, low assists, low steals, low blocks, low efficiency. Can be a scorer, but that opportunity is not there. So I mentioned him just so we've got someone to talk about in this section. But we're not really expecting huge amounts from uh, from Simo coming in. To, should we call him Roy? A. Simons? If you get what that means... Drop it in the comments below. Let's call him Roy. All right. So yeah, if I don't, I don't really see much from Roy, but I don't really know if there are any other, um, any other breakout options on this team. Let's go to the next thing. Let's talk fantasy sleepers. This is where we love it, don't don't we? We absolutely love it because Damian Lillard, for some reason, is ranked at nine on ESPN, the seventh ranked player last season. Lillard was thirteenth in points leagues. Bear that in mind. In a points league, Lillard is much worse. Much worse in points leagues. Drops off. But turn to the first round sort of player. So maybe he's a bust in a points league. But nine on ESPN. He's at seven on Yahoo, six on Fantrax. I like him in that five to eight range, five to seven range. But to me, again, there's, there is the clear top eight. And if you've got him at nine, that means you've got him outside the top eight. I don't know who they've got ahead of him in that position. That might be interesting for me to look up. Who, who do they have? In the top eight, old ESPN, that is uh, that is not Damian Lillard. Let's just bring that up. They have got hmm, Jason Tatum ahead of him. Okay. I'll take Lillard ahead of Tatum every day. And uh, so that's where there's value. I also think, again, I talked about this already, Yusuf Nurkic. Last season, Nurkic struggled. He played 24 minutes a night and he ranked 99th. Right. So keep those numbers in your head. 24 minutes and 99th. His ADP on ESPN is currently 97. His rank is 85. Yahoo's got it a little bit better at 72. Fantrax has got him at, uh, well, they got him at 69 because that's nice. Giggity. Um, but that's, that is just stealing value. 
especially at ESPN, but also at Yahoo. Now, I think that a top 40 season is a possibility for Nurk. I won't take him in round two, round three, probably round four. But as I've talked about before, and you'll see it with more mock drafts, and you saw it in our center tier show, which you haven't watched the center tier show, go and watch it. There is a stack of big men in the middle rounds. And when they get wiped out, you're down to, ooh, Yucca uh, Pertle is who I need. Like it, 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 You will see in rounds like six through eight, probably, you might see 10, 11 centers go. It, it gets wiped out. So that's the area where you're looking at Nurkic. Right? And he's got value to step up this season a lot. And you know, I'm projecting him as a fourth round sort of guy, that four, 40 to 55 range. But if he plays 32 minutes, he'll beat that really comfortably. I, I like the value on him. Storm and Norman Powell. A lot of his value comes from efficiency, but he's been super efficient the last two seasons. So maybe he just is a super efficient shooter. But when he arrived in Portland, those numbers did drop. So maybe it was the Toronto ecosystem and the players that he was playing with and the shots that he was getting in a Nick Nurse offense that helped him. But of course, we can't judge that on Portland because it's a different coach now. Stotts is out, Billups is in. He shot just 44% from the field in Portland as opposed to 50 in Toronto. He was at 50 the year before in Toronto as well. His three-point percentage went from 44 down to 36, and his two-pointers went from 55 down to 50. If he stays at those Portland numbers, then maybe 117 is actually correct for Norman Powell. Yahoo's got him at 95. Fantrax got him at 84. I I would, you know, I have him in that 80 to 90 range. I probably would push him outside the top 90, to be honest. And when I say I've got him in the 80 to 90 range, when I do projections and rankings, I do not go in. And again, I have to stress this a lot. I do not go in and rank players. You are number one. You are number two. You are number 80. You are number 84. I don't do that. We project every individual category out, and then how it comes out is how it comes out. So when I see Norman Powell, and I'll give you a spoiler, like on my category league rankings, Norman Powell comes out at 80th. And I look at that and go, oh, I'm looking at his numbers. I would not take him at 80. No way. Even though that's where I'm projecting him out because I can see the downside risk in that. There's the downside risk in the 32 minutes that he plays. Maybe that drops. I've got him at like 17 to 18 points. Maybe that drops. But I've also got him at 47% from the field. It's lower than his Toronto numbers, but it's higher than his Portland numbers. But what if he's a 44% shooter? Then he is the 100th best player. So that's why I wouldn't take him at 80, despite how those projections come out. Because projections aren't, this is definitely what happens, and this is what I think is going to happen. It doesn't take into account ranges. So I look at that and go... I'll let it slide. Someone else take the risk. If he's there at 95, he's there at 100, I'll probably take a crack. This is my best case. Est- this is not my best case, sorry. This is my estimate. This is how I sort of think it's going to go, but I'm also not confident in it. And I know I'm talking about this a lot, but I think it's important to know. The criminally, perennially underranked Robert Covington is another sleeper. He's at 106 on Yahoo. Now, Yahoo drafters are looking at that and telling Yahoo to stick it up their ass because they're drafting him at 86. On Fantrax, he's at 85, but ESPN is not. They don't know what they're doing. He's at 132 on ESPN. He's being drafted at 135, and much like when I talked with the Sixers before, and I looked at you know, people looking at Andre Drummond's rankings, and they thought, wow, Drummond's at 93. I've got to jump ahead of that to get him. People are looking at Covington sitting at the top of their board, and they're passing him. They're passing him at 132 and going, no, 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 no. We'll go down. We'll let. We'll take other guys below him, which is nonsense. Covington, despite the struggles, man, he was shit last year, wasn't he? He was ranked 86th. Is that shit? No, it's not. In a points league, he is not as good. He was still low, 118th in the Yahoo points league. He is a back-end points league guy. In a category league, yeah, I really like what he's going to be able to do this year. Again, always seems to be a little bit of a steal of a player. And then Larry Nance, ESPN has him at 174. Fantrax has got him at 180. You've got, you got to take him towards the end of a 12-team league. Yahoo's got him at 146. Even that, I think, is probably too low. If he starts, a top 100 will happen. I think he's a top 120 regardless. And I think there is value right across the board from old, uh, old Laz Nance right there. On the bus side, because there were so many sleepers there, Covington, Nance, Lillard, Powell, the potential for Nurkic, there's so many sleepers. There's not many busts on this team. But CJ McCollum at 34, I I think you have to be smoking crack to be doing that. Not to draft him there is what I'm saying. Yahoo's got him at 68. I think that's maybe too low. Fantrax ADP's at 51. I think that's bang on. And the Yahoo ADP's got him at 52. Again, it's probably bang on. That 50 
to 65 range. ESPN drafters are looking at him at 34 and they're letting him slide a bit to 43, but that's still insane. Last year, he was 48th in 34 minutes a night. I'm, I don't think that he repeats that personally, but he might not be far off. But that, the 34 is also suggesting, well, CJ, you did this. We think you're going to be way better. I think they're going to be way wrong. He was 38th in points leagues last year. So there is that. You, know, you want to take him in that 40 to 50 range in a points league? Sure. But again, there was no Nurkic. There was no power for most of the season. Those guys are going to get some touches. I really don't think CJ... CJ was hurt as well. Yes. Yep. He had a broken foot. Didn't stop him from playing 34 minutes a night. And as I mentioned in that podcast with Mike, that CJ, um, when he shared the court with Dame, took more field goal attempts than Dame Lillard. That's something that should literally never happen. So hopefully it doesn't happen this year. So I think that'll drop some of his uh, usage down. I just think him at 34 is a high degree of insanity. I just... I don't, I don't see what... I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what we're doing by taking him in that area. Um, guys, do you want parts for your car? The place to go is Rock Auto. You don't want to wander in to your local chain auto parts store. Like we're dealing with a pandemic, my guys. Stay at home. You're going to waste money and time and risk health. I can't even go to a local chain auto parts store here even if I wanted to. I could go straight to rockauto.com though and save money by getting all those parts that you need at a cheaper price. RockAuto.com is a family business that has been serving auto parts customers online for the last 20 years, whether it's brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, or even new carpet. Rock Auto has everything you need for your car or truck. So go to their website, rockauto.com. Have a look at all the parts available for your car or truck. And in there, how did you hear about us box? Right, locked on so that they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. And while you're browsing the Rock Auto website, have a built bar because they are the best tasting protein bar ever. After you get back from your workout, go smash a built bar or two. You're going to love the flavor. It's like having a treat, but you're not actually being all that naughty by doing it. Raspberry flavor, orange flavor, cookies and cream, so many great flavors across the Built Bar range. But it's not just that they're delicious. They're also healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, 4 to 5 grams of net carbs, and 130 to 180 calories per bar across the range. This is ridiculous. These are so good for you and taste so fantastic. And now you can get it for 15% off. If you have not tried a Built Bar, please do it. Locked 15 is the code to use. Go to built.com, use that code LOCKED15 and save 15% off your order of Built Bars. Built.com, LOCKED15. Built Bar are the best tasting protein bars ever. Let's look at some deep league flyers or last picks in standard leagues. We talked Simons already. He's a bit of a deep league guy. Well, Nance is a great last pick in a standard league who I think is going to beat that number pretty easily. Again, I don't love your Tony Snells. Nasir Littles, Trendon Watfords, Ben McLemore's, Dennis Smith Jr. is not big on those guys as flyers. I think Simons and Nance are probably the only options we're really looking for in um, in that area. Let's go to the last and let's talk about the rest of the players. Cody Zeller. I think he's a solid, really solid backup NBA center at this point in his career. He's not really going to have any sort of impact from a fantasy point of view. Maybe if Nurk gets hurt, Zala can be a streamer in like 14-team leagues. That's probably the upside that Zala has. Dennis Smith Jr. is on this roster. I don't know if he gets the final roster spot. I don't believe he will, but he could. I think he's a better passer and a much better defender than Anthony Simons is. Smith had some real injury problems, obviously, in his career. And then last season, when he was establishing himself in Detroit, he got hurt. But he turned himself into an absolute defensive menace when he was absolutely shit house defensively. The shot is, st- I don't think it's ever going to come around, but he was putting up massive steal and block numbers. So just just watch to see if Smith gets that spot. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Smith play as a backup point guard and Simons play as you know, your backup shooting guard, combo guard sort of player. Just watch Dennis because he put up some massive defensive numbers last year. Massive. Marquise Chris is the other option who's sort of competing for that last roster spot. They don't have really many centers at all. Chris, again, has improved his game significantly. So I don't think that he's a long-term starter or high-level rotation player. But if he can hit his threes, block some shots, jump ahead of Zala, perhaps, or Zala gets hurt, a name to watch depending on who gets that rotation spot. Tony Snell was in the 50-50-90 club last year. I don't actually... I don't... Did he miss a... I don't think he missed a single free throw again. I, th- I don't think he's missed a free throw in two years. Let's uh, just go and check that out. But we know Snell's not a great um, fantasy option. In fact, he's literally one of the worst fantasy options you can throw out there. But in terms of the way that he was able to shoot, it was obviously hyper impressive. Um, Yeah, he didn't didn't miss a free throw. He has not missed a free throw in two years. 
doesn't take any of them, but he hasn't missed any either. Um, not a fantasy option. Now, see a little. I thought Show flashes in his rookie year, regressed a little bit, has a chance to establish himself back in the rotation, although Larry Nance's arrival probably hurts that somewhat. CJ Allaby was terrible last season, and then they brought in Greg Brown, who's a long way away from contributing, and trended Watford is their two-way guy who's probably just not going to play at all. And I don't have too many high hopes for Watford. That will do it. For today's show, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. On YouTube, give me a thumbs up. Drop a Go Dogs down in the comments. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.